Meditation is not really about seeing and experiencing anything out of the ordinary. It is about entering more fully into the ordinary and discovering the presence of God. As you grow more steady in your daily meditation, the discipline produces a deep state of relaxation, reduces stress and anxiety, enhances immune system, as well as the physical and emotional well-being. Meditation is actually used to manage illnesses, including anxiety disorders, asthma, cancer, depression, heart disease, high blood pressure, pain, and sleep disorders. It can also improve memory. But more important than this is the fruits of meditation, which bring inner change. It is in your daily life, and especially in your relationships, that you will notice these fruits. Your awareness of this personal inner change may not be rapid or dramatic. The change can best be described in what St. Paul called the harvest of the Spirit. Notice that the first one is love, which is the most important of all. Agape love is the highest form of love, love for both God and neighbor. It is selfless, focus on the other person, given freely and gladly, without condition, or the expectation of repayment, expressed in service or concrete action and willing to suffer on another's behalf. Joy is not emotional in the sense that we commonly think of joy. Rather, it is the state of being undisturbed by the negative things in life. It is deeper than pleasure or happiness. Joy is an interior contentment that comes from being close to God and in right relationship with others. In a new taste for the simple and natural things in life, joy also comes from speaking and upholding the truth, honesty and integrity in relationships, enduring hardships and decent conduct. Peace is the gift Jesus gives us through His Spirit. It is a tranquility in our soul that comes from his own deep inner harmony with himself, with the Father, and with all creation. It is a tranquility that comes from relying on God. Rather than getting caught up in anxiety for the future, we, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, trust God to provide. Patience is the ability to bear the imperfections of other people through a knowledge of our own imperfections and our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. By treating others with thoughtfulness and tolerance, we are capable of demonstrating our ability to resist temptation and the need for God's mercy and forgiveness. As love is patient, patience is the virtue of suffering interruption or delay with composure and without complaint, to suffer annoyance, insult, or mistreatment with self-restraint, refusing to be provoked and to suffer burdens and difficult tasks with resolve and determination. It is also the willingness to slow down for another's benefit, to set aside one's personal plans and concerns to go at another space, and to take whatever time is necessary to address their need. Kindness is the willingness to give to others above and beyond what we owe them. It is the willingness to do more for others than they do for us. It is treating others the way we would like them to treat us. Kindness is a warm and friendly disposition toward another. A kind person is polite and well-mannered, respectful and considerate, pleasant and agreeable, cheerful and upbeat. 
caring and helpful, positive and complementary. Generosity, also translated as goodness, is about being honorable and charitable. It is unselfish and expresses itself in sharing. It is extended to family and friends, strangers, and particularly those in need, and is offered not only as money, food, and clothing, but also as time shared and assistance provided. God blesses us so that we in turn might bless others. We should also give with an open heart, not reluctantly. Faithfulness means living our life in accordance with God's will and by committing to the teachings of Jesus Christ at all times. We are called to be faithful to Him, who is always faithful to us. If we are faithful in the small things, God will reward us. As we perform the simple task of our daily lives, it is easy to feel as if they have no importance. But the Lord is watching us and sees the small acts of faithfulness we do each day. We can also take comfort that even when we struggle to be faithful, the Lord continues to uphold and protect us. To be gentle in behavior is to be forgiving rather than angry, gracious rather than vengeful. People inherently have a tendency to be rough, angry and vengeful. Gentleness is the practice of non-violence towards others as well as towards ourselves. The gentle person is meek, like Jesus himself, who said that, I am gentle and humble of heart. He does not insist on having his own way, but yields to others for the sake of the kingdom of God. Gentleness is sensitivity for another person. It is concerned with another's welfare, safety, and security. It is grounded in humility. The approach is careful, tender, considerate, affectionate, and mild-mannered, free of all pushiness, roughness, or abrasiveness. Self-control does not mean denying oneself what one needs, or even necessarily what one wants, so long as what one wants is something good. Rather, it is the exercise of moderation in all things. By overcoming and resisting temptations of a sexual nature or other questionable appetites, we are doing God's will. This does not mean to deny oneself of what is needed, but to limit one's wants to what is an appropriate behavior or level of indulgence. Self-control is self-mastery, regardless of the circumstances, to be in control of oneself rather than to be controlled by temptations, events, or other people, especially when under pressure or in times of crisis. It is to remain calm, cool, and collected, reasonable and even tempered, to be alert and conscious, to proceed with caution and prudence, and to avoid an impulse response, to be a moderating influence, and to have the strength and courage to reject evil and choose good. The fruits of the Spirit grow gradually in us as we persevere in meditation because we begin to turn to the power of love at the center of our being. All of these gifts are released as we learn to listen to the language of the heart, which is the silence waiting for us beyond the noise of this world and the noise of our own egoism. The source of our being is also the source that heals us and makes us whole. To be whole is to be holy. In meditation, we are sanctified in and by the process of being healed.